What's up everybody, Kier Gomes here with 52 Wonders, and today, not only are we gonna be reviewing a deck of cards, but I'm also gonna be teaching you a very fun, very simple, and super satisfying uh, little card flourish that you can use in magic routines, you can use it in cardistry, or you can just use it to impress your friends. So the deck that we're gonna be taking a look at is the Medusa playing cards by Cartamundi, and the move I'm gonna be teaching you is the Cyclone. Before we get started, please do drop a like on this video, and of course, subscribe if you aren't already. Now let's roll that intro and get you guys on your way. All right, so these are the Medusa playing cards. The tuck case is done in all black and white on a glossy cardstock. The front of the tuck case features the head of Medusa, who uh, in mythology is a woman with snakes for hair. It's a very well done illustration. It looks very classy. Both sides of the deck say Medusa playing cards. The bottom of the deck has some ad copy. And as far as I can see, there is nothing on the top of the deck because of this beautiful custom gold seal. And the back design, of course, is the back design of the playing cards. On the inside tongue flap, it says, close your eyes. Now the reason it says close your eyes is because in mythology, looking at Medusa would actually render the person that looks at her, uh, turn them into stone. That's it for the box, but let's take a look at the cards. All right, this is what the back design of the cards look like. It's a nice, thin, white border with these really cool snake emblems kind of making up this design in the back. And then in the middle, you have even more snakes and serpents kind of creating this depth illusion which looks really good. And as well, this deck is marked. You do need to buy this deck to uh, study the marking system. It's not a reader back. It does have to be interpreted, but it's marked in two places, which is really interesting. Really, really enjoying this back design. It looks very classy, very, very well done. Your Ace of Spades looks like this. It is a giant serpent with some light beams coming off of it and those smaller snake logos kind of incorporated in there. And if you hold it upside down, you can see it does make the shape of a giant spade pip. You get two identical jokers that match the front of the tuck box with this illustration of Medusa in the middle. And instead of saying joker in the corner, you get two snakes. These might actually be some of my favorite jokers. In terms of gaff cards, you are gonna get a double facer, which is a queen of hearts and an ace of clubs on the other side. You can use this for certain magic effects. And you're also gonna get a duplicate eight of spades. Now, this is a fully custom deck and it comes in uh, a stack. And I don't believe it's a Mnemonica stack. I don't, I don't actually recognize what stack this is. So if you happen to know, let me know in the comments. Your faces are gonna be kind of substandard. So the court cards do look pretty similar to as you would find them on a bicycle deck. However, uh, they are all done in black and white with red accents. And as you can see, the indices have a completely custom font. As well, the faces are custom as well. You can see they look basically standard, but the pips are a lot smaller and the indices are as well very small and very thin. More court cards. They look very good. They match, they definitely match the deck. That's for sure. This is what the cards look like in a fan. Very classy. I love with those small pips. It just looks so good. You can see every single index. All right, so that's gonna do it for the way this deck looks. Let's talk about the handling and then I'll teach you the move. All right, so the handling of this deck is uh, extraordinary. Because it's printed on Cartamundi's True Linen B9 finish, uh, which is the same card stock you would find on the Copag 310s, the Red Keepers, the Diva playing cards, Kingslayers. I mean, so many decks printed on this card stock and that's because it is, uh, in my opinion, the best card stock available today. The cards are nice and thick, however, they don't come out of the box feeling stiff and difficult to use. They come out of the box feeling soft as if they were crushed, but you get that nice thickness of the cards. But they spring with ease. I haven't broken these in yet. Very easy to spring. No issues with a fan at all. Of course, they look good in movement, especially with those kind of tally-ho style circles on the back. Cards definitely Pharaoh best from top to bottom, which makes them a modern cut. 
And the move that I'm going to be teaching you is the Cyclone, which is a good way to test how snappy the cards are. All right, so now that we've talked about the look of the deck and how well they handle, uh, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so the move that I'm going to be teaching you is the Cyclone. It looks like that. It's basically a way to shoot one card uh, from your left hand to your right or right hand to your left or uh, to keep it in the same hand, which is a little bit more difficult, but uh, can look pretty cool as you saw in the intro. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to hold the deck in dealer's grip, just like this. Uh, this is also known as mechanics grip. So you want to have it flat in mechanics grip like that. And then what you're going to do is transfer it into this kind of grip, almost like you're holding uh, like a book. You want to have all four of your fingers along the bottom horizontal edge of the deck, and you want to have your thumb start off up here on the corner. So it should look like this. Next thing you want to do, once you're in this grip, you want to take your index finger, your first finger, and just apply some pressure like that, almost like a guitar chord. Then you want to take your pinky and do the same thing. So now you're holding it kind of like that. Once you're in this grip, use your index finger, your first finger, to pull off one card and then use your pinky to kind of hold it in place. So you should be in this position here. So once again, you go from dealer's grip, put it into this kind of book grip, and then you're gonna use your index and pinky to peel off a card so that you're in this situation here, okay? Now from here, it's gonna require a little bit of practice, but you're gonna to need to get your middle finger under the card so it buckles like this, and then your ring finger is just gonna be hanging out here in space, okay? Now this is the grip you need to be in for the move. In order to administer the move, if I take the card away but leave my fingers, you're just gonna do this. So you're gonna take your index or first finger and middle finger and just switch them off like that. So at speed, we go from dealer's grip or mechanic's grip, Hold it like a book, index and pinky, peel off a card, dig your middle finger under it, and then release pressure with your pinky at the same time that you switch off your index and middle finger doing that. Now, if you do the move slowly, the card will shoot in a weird direction or it'll go straight ahead. What you wanna do is when you release the card, just flick your wrist this way, like that. You almost wanna make it as if you're trying not to touch the deck like that. So I'm gonna switch angles really quick and give you guys a more exposed view of that. Okay, so at this angle, you should be able to see a little bit more fluid how this is gonna go. So remember, you start off in dealer's grip, move it to this type of grip here. You're gonna isolate these two fingers and just peel, depending on what finger you're comfortable with, you might use your pinky or you might use your index. I usually do my pinky. Peel off one card, okay, so it looks like that. At first, if you're just learning this, at first it's probably gonna pull off multiple cards, which is okay. You just wanna get the sensitivity down to just get one. The rest of it's fairly simple. So now you just take your middle finger and buckle it right under that card. That's gonna create a buildup of tension so that when you release it, it's gonna go flying wherever you want it to go. Fast motion, it's gonna look like that. Get your buckle, release, and you're just gonna be able to shoot the card and catch it. So now let's go over uh, kind of a technique for catching the card. Okay, so now that you know how to hold the deck, you know what the uh, actual mechanics look like for this move, some subtleties that you wanna get used to doing are gonna be the, number one, how you catch the card is very important because if you do the move, even if it rotates perfectly, even if it moves at a perfect distance and speed, uh, catching it, if you don't catch it cleanly and you catch it sloppy, uh, it can kind of ruin the whole effect, right? The whole point of this move is using it as like a card production or using it in a card flourish. And either way, you wanna be able to catch it as clean as you can shoot it. Now, when you catch it, you wanna have your hand open and kind of just ready to pinch because the move is gonna be catching it like that. Well guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you taking the time. Of course, please do not forget to subscribe if you like this type of content and make sure you drop a like on this video and show us here at 52 Wonders some love. And that's pretty much gonna do it for us here today. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I know I will. We are 52 Wonders and we will see you guys later.